Hi everyone and welcome to Film Dirt. For this one I'm going to talk about Ghostbusters Afterlife. This is a very nostalgic film, isn't it? it it's got a lot of callbacks to the previous Ghostbusters. And, um, and let's talk about it. And I'm going to go over a few spoilers as well. So this is definitely a spoiler review. Please don't watch if you haven't seen it already. Go and watch it and you can come back and tell me if you agree with any of my thoughts here. So, overall, it's a very nostalgic film. There's a lot of, I mean, a lot of nostalgia here. It's almost like a, a whole feature-length tribute to the first movie and, and parts of the second. And for the most part, it's great. I mean, I love that they've done this. And it is a love letter to the original. He aims to set up its own story. And you've got these kids and their family of Egon. It's nice that they're all connected. And this is like the next generation of, of Ghostbuster, if you like. That's what it's really trying to set up. And whilst there's a lot of callbacks, I felt the first half of the movie, maybe the first hour, hour and a half, I just felt there was a, a lot of uninteresting stuff happening connected to the children. I just didn't find it interesting enough to carry the movie. Now, I like the sections with um, Egon's daughter. They're broke and they're having to stay in this farmhouse belonging to Egon, where he apparently escaped to. And that, that part is great, but we didn't need a whole first half of the movie just basically going through this and then following the children around and seeing their lives and the friends they make. It was just all very uninteresting and not really funny like the first film was. And that's a problem for me. What's the connection here to the first movie? Is it supposed to be a comedy or a comedy drama? Or is it just a nostalgia movie full of callbacks and tributes? So I'm just trying to think about it and it's... It's just not doing enough. It's it's uh, it's basically a, a trailer. <laughs> That's what I felt. I think uh, I think my son mentioned that. So it just seems like a full length trailer for the Ghostbusters brand. And I don't want that in a movie. It's it's got to be its own thing. It should have been part three almost, and just have its own story rather than all these callbacks. It's great that it's connected by family to characters in the original film and then we see them pop up at the end as well that part is great i'd like to see them pop up from the beginning or at least in the first half right at the end i think it's too late we've gone through the whole film by then and we've stuck with these children and that's like i said it's just not interesting enough and it just seemed to be large portions of the first half where we're following these children at I think they're at school and and with their friends and I'm just wondering what are we being told here I'm not finding it interesting and none of my kids are watching it with me and it's just just boring and that's a shame and I wanted more from this movie and when it stepped up and, and became Ghostbusters 3 in the second half you know with E Evo Shandor and we get that story and we start to learn what happened after the the tales said in the original two then it starts to get interesting it's almost like we didn't need the, the children's backstory and I think we could have bypassed that almost completely we could have had just a one scene or a couple of throwaway lines to us where this child is from where Egon's child is and, and what she's doing now and that's it and we could have had the uh, exploration of the ghostbusters and and she's making friends with this other guy in school that's where the comedy can then come in it just seemed to be just a lot of time wasting and throwaway scenes that don't get us anywhere really and we know she's a bookworm and uh, we know she's very intelligent and very much like Egon. It's almost the same character, but in a young female. We didn't really need that for an hour to an hour and a half. Okay, so when it 
starts becoming Ghostbusters 3 from the middle of the movie onwards, I thought, great. That's great. It's nice to see uh, the Evo Shandor character mentioned in, in, I think, Ghostbusters 2, I think, very briefly. And that is fleshed out here. And obviously there's a, there's a rich record of uh, notes that have been saved and discovered by the original Ghostbusters that need to be uncovered. And the parts where we've got a, a presence from the ghost of Egon, I thought that was nice. And I think it was just a little bit too much. Especially towards the end of the movie where he starts appearing as a ghost. I think we didn't need that duration of time spent with Egon's ghost. I think he could have just appeared and helped from the afterlife from the nether realm from this other dimension whatever you want to call it he could have helped us from there and and then you know we could have seen his image he could have smiled and then disappeared not only have we helped egon in the afterlife he's helped us so that could have been left at that unified connection almost and it was great to see his ghost i didn't think there was anything wrong with that at all like some um platforms are saying i, I don't agree that there's anything bad i think it's great it touches your heart and it was just good to see him because you know if you if you're an 80s child like me and you know you've watched the ghostbusters so many times these guys these guys are, are legends and it, it was good to have that callback to the original Ghostbusters, finally. I mean, so much time has passed, doesn't it? <laughs> and we really need to see Ghostbusters 3 much earlier. So that was good. But I just think we held on the ghost a little bit too much. And the tribute for Harold, that was nice. I'd love to have seen that at the end of the movie. Because we're invested already by then. We didn't need it during the movie. It just, I don't know, it just took me out of it. I think that's what told us that we're watching a tribute movie. And I'd rather have seen that at the end. So, with that said, it was great. It was great, in part. It was good to see the old guys back. I mean, they didn't do much. It was, it looked like it was all, it was all done in a day. And we got the guys in, uh, dressed them up and they stood it. I don't think it was a blue screen, it was a set in the corner and it was integrated into the rest of the movie yeah it's great i'd love to have seen them from the start and there's a couple of throwaway post credit scenes actually they're not throwaway i think they're actually quite relevant the, the scene with winston and janine i mean that's great we get the little inter introduction and the and the little flashback to when they were young and and she's talking about the coin which she still owns. I don't remember seeing anything mentioned about the coin in the original film, but they've unearthed this scene that was cut. That That is great, when we're actually dealing with the original characters, because that's who we're there to see. And Winston is great, good to see Ernie Hudson. He's actually acting here, not running around. He's great. I've always thought of him as a integral part of the Ghostbusters. And apparently this was Dan Aykroyd's original vision for Winston, where he would eventually become a very successful businessman and possibly achieve his uh, doctorate. Maybe he was doing some after work study at university. So that's good. He's come good. And that's what we wanted to see. We wanted to see how these guys are doing. And the passing of Harold Ramis and, and the more recent passing of Ivan Reitman. Very sad. Rest in peace, gentlemen. This film really is a, a tribute to both of them as it was directed by his son, Jason Reitman, who, for the most part, I think did a good job. It's just needed to be tightened a bit more in the first half, and less about characters that are not very interesting. It's good to see that the descendants and the kids and their friends for a brief couple of scenes, but not for the first half of a movie. It just went on a bit too long for me. But... You get the idea of what we're watching. We're seeing a, a build-up to the original characters appearing at the end. 
so you have to sit through the whole movie just to get to the end and I'd rather have seen them from from the first half not at the beginning maybe towards halfway we can establish where the original Ghostbusters are and what they're doing now so what should we give this film I think it's great um, it's a three and a half for me it's definitely above average and I can't give it a four star it's just because of the first half of the movie was just a bit too dull so for me it's a positive three and a half and those three and a half stars that's for the return of the original guys I mean it was so good to see them and their scene is touching and all the stuff with Egon's spirit that that's that's very touching as well and it was good to see and um, if we could have just gone a little bit less <laughs> on the uh, on the weepy scenes and just the, tone that down I think it would have hit home more and it would have been more of a thing it would have been it would have meant more to us that's what I meant so thank you guys for joining me for this review of Ghostbusters Afterlife and just to leave you with a little bit about myself as I always say I'm not a shill and I'm not in the pockets of any of the studios I don't even receive free tickets to go to movies and all my reviews are genuine Thanks again, it's good speaking to you, and I'll speak to you again for another review. Take care.